Good morning and hello. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a Monday player vlog. Woo, woo. Yes, I am so excited for these Monday prayer vlogs. We're back. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. So I did take a long hiatus from these prayer vlogs. And as a matter of fact, if you notice, even from vlogging altogether, they kind of got very sparse in between sporadic, you know, like... It's a lot of time in between. To be honest, I was I took some time to just pray and reflect to make sure this is something I should be doing. I just wanted that peace of God that I was making the right choice um, as to what to do. So I am going to continue with my prayer vlogs. Um, I do want them on Monday. I did try to change it to call it daily devotion, um, but I think we're going to call them Monday prayer vlogs. And if they change, they change. But um, this is where we're at now. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm excited about that. So, look forward to seeing Monday Player Vlogs, and maybe we'll add more stuff to the channel as time goes by. As you can tell behind me, it is kind of like a little construction zone, and I still have stuff boxed up. We did recently move, so that's why that stuff is there. All right, so unity in the spirit. I'm excited that is the topic. And like I normally say, I look off to the side to look at the scripture. I have them on my computer screen. When I do my personal devotions, I do use a regular Bible. But um, and for these purposes, I normally like to have them pulled up on the screen. Um, so Psalm 133 verse 1. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I will read it again. Behold, how good and and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I didn't even read it. I just kind of recited it. Verse 133.1. The next um, portion of scripture comes from the book of Ephesians. And then it's chapter 4. And I will be reading verses 3 through 6. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. The next portion of scripture also comes from the book of Ephesians, and we will be reading verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold, threefold cord is not quickly broken. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the word of the Lord explicitly tells us that we should have unity in the spirit, unity in the house of the Lord, unity as brothers and sisters in Christ. And that is what I really wanted to share with you guys today is that unity of the spirit. Oftentimes we find that there's discord even amongst church members, amongst other brothers and sisters in Christ. And other pe and people who call themselves Christians. Um, I know you guys know my history. I have a small, they told me don't say small, innovative, huh? But I have a um, up and coming, actually, that's the way they told me, ministry. And um, I'm thankful to God that we're, we're, we're still growing um, spiritually and we're at, uh, still small enough that. We haven't gotten any really issues within brothers and sisters in Christ not getting along. So I'm thankful to God for that. And if I teach sound doctrine and we pray together and if the people do their part in reading and studying their word, we trust that we will um, not allow that to enter in, you know, but as part of human nature, you know, um, people oftentimes don't always agree and that's fine. But what the Word of God is talking here is not saying, um, you can't disagree. 
is having unity in the spirit, is um, striving and, and, and wrestling with one another, um, whether it may be emotionally, whether it may be just um, for all sorts of things. I've seen it. I've been around many Christian circles um, in my walk with the Lord. Um, um, and um, it's not something that we as believers want to be a part of. It can destroy um, people's Christian walk, people's faith, if they're not strong enough in their faith. It can destroy churches. It can destroy um, Christian organizations or, or families. Um, so we want to make sure we maintain unity in the spirit. We want to make sure that we um, come together as believers in Christ. As a matter of fact, I'm going to scroll back up because I was scrolling down to um, these scriptures. And it says, Behold... How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Endeavoring, Ephesians, endeavoring to keep, that was Psalms, now this Ephesians, to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Pardon me. In the bond of peace. Therefore, the Word of God is telling us that we need to endeavor to keep unity in the Spirit in the bond of peace. We need to make sure that we walk in peace. Um, I've seen it where it, it has just destroyed people's lives. There are Christians that won't even come to church because there was no peace at the church where they went. There was no peace for them. And they shied away from God altogether because of this. And it's so hurtful to see, especially as a, a minister of the gospel, to see where people are just so hurt they just cannot even come to church. And... I feel bad because it's, you don't want to be offensive, but you want to just be like, you're not coming for the people, you're coming for God. But to what extent should that person sacrifice their emotions, their peace, their, you know, mental state, even sometimes, um, you know, I, so it's, it's understandable. And I just recommend praying, ask the Lord to lead you where a place where you're going to be comfortable. It may not be that church, you know, it's not saying to cut and run. But if there's no peace there, um, obviously there's a problem. So maybe the Lord will lead you elsewhere. Or maybe it's time to pray and fast and and see if there could um, be some change at that place, you know. Um, but yes, I have some examples of what we as believers can accomplish when we walk in peace. So... Pardon me, I said when we walk in peace, I meant to say in unity, which I guess peace is part of that unity. But the book of Acts, we go to chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Um, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in, a, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound of, from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appear unto them clothes of tongues like as fire, and it sat upon each one, each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this is a prime example of people being in unity. Um, when they were in unity, like Jesus told them to, you know, to go and to wait for the Comforter, wait for the one that would be sent. Hallelujah which was the Spirit of God that now dwells on the inside of us. And they were filled with the Spirit of God because they were um, in one accord. They were in unity. So this shows me that I can receive blessings from God, that I can receive blessing from off above, that we as a corporate body of believers can be blessed of God corporately. Hallelujah! When we walk in unity, when we walk in that perfect peace. Hallelujah! Lord God, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! I have another prime example, and this is from the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpet, and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, all the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight forward before him, and they took the city. Hallelujah to God. Divine deliverance can occur. When you walk in unity. Brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to learn how to walk in unity. With each other. We need to learn how to. 
trust in the Lord that he'll take care of any situation. The word of God tells us that if you so if you know someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. If you're going to the altar of God for prayer, um, go back and make sure things are right between your brother and sister in Christ. And then go to the altar. Then go to prayer. Then go to bring to God, whether it be praise, you know, because those are the type of sacrifices that we do this these days. Like the word of God says, bring forth your sacrifice of praise, right? Which is the fruit of your lips, right? Hallelujah to God. All right, brothers and sisters in Christ, I have to cut this short. Let us pray. Eternal everlasting God, we pray that you give us unity, Lord God. Allow us to walk in unity in the spirit, Lord God. Give us wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Amen, brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being a part of this channel. Thank you for being part of this ministry. Don't forget to click subscribe and give us a thumbs up.